I needed to basically go back to the drawing board for how I was gonna tackle this bottom portion. We're gonna go ahead and give everything one coat of white. I wanted to add a cool design on the front of the checkout counter. Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's time for our first flip in our new workshop. I'm Lauren. And I'm Neiman. We just got our dream storefront located in Omaha, Nebraska. And we've got 10 weeks before our grand open. And we are going to be transforming this space into a beautiful place where so much magic will happen. From painting and selling furniture to hosting workshops and furniture contests, this place will have it all. And best of all, we're bringing you along on yet another journey with FFT. Buckle, Buckle up and, and enjoy, enjoy the ride. Now that we've got our flooring laid and things are really moving and grooving, it's time to start hitting the ground really hard because we are in the nitty gritty. We are gonna be making over this reception desk with Beyond Paint. Thanks so much to Beyond Paint for sponsoring today's video. We've got some work to do on this to bring it back into the modern times. I found this on Facebook Marketplace actually, and we paid $500 for it. So it's the most heavy thing we've ever, 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 ever lifted and put in our truck. We drove about an hour away two times because this is two parts and it only would fit in our truck one part at a time, but we got it here. And so I have some ideas that I'm going to implement on this to make it much more modern and to make it really fit in with the whole style of our new storefront. So it's super important to get the surface clean, especially when you're using a paint that doesn't require the sanding and the primer, because we need to make sure that the paint still has this surface to adhere to. And if there's dust and dirt on it, it wouldn't really be able to adhere to the furniture. It would adhere to the dust and dirt, which then would come right off. Uh, Beyond Paint recommends Simple Green as the cleaner. So I've got some diluted Simple Green here. This is gross. Granted, kind of been here in the workshop for a while, been in the back of our truck for a while. It was in their storage unit for a while, so to be expected, but still, it's pretty gross. Okay, our last step of the cleaning process is just to rinse it with some clean water. Uh, sometimes the simple green can leave behind a bit of a residue. And again, we just want everything free and clear so that that paint has really great adhesion. But I can tell you, even though it's still looking outdated, it's already looking a lot better now that I've just gotten the cleaning done. All right, it's time to make some repairs. And a lot of the veneer or like the laminate top layer is kind of peeling back, especially down around the bottom edge. But then there's also a few spots on this main portion as well. So basically I am going to kind of just remove as much of it as I can down here. And then I'm gonna have to bondo it. So for the repairs, I'm gonna be using Bondo All-Purpose Putty, and it comes in a two-part formula. So I've got the first part here that I'm getting out of the can, and then when you mix the second part together with this part, it will start to harden. So you kind of have to work a little bit quickly once that 
starts to mix together because it does like to harden pretty quick. So we're just gonna want a consistent color here, lighter blue. And then once that's all consistent, we'll be able to just go ahead and wipe it onto whichever surface needs to be repaired. It's good to work in small batches. Even my batch here is kind of on the larger side um, for how quickly this stuff dries. So I'm just gonna put it on some of the chips that need to be filled in here. Once it hardens, we'll be able to sand it back nice and smooth. Day two of this project, we didn't get too much done because I needed to basically go back to the drawing board for how I was gonna tackle this bottom portion. So what I've decided is I'm gonna go ahead and just take off this black part because it's not really sticking the best and the Bondo just isn't gonna cut it for the really niceness that I want it to look like. So what I ended up doing is finding this veneer, um, it's like for a toe kick. And so once I take this off, I'll be able to just put that right on over it and it's gonna look a lot better, just super even, um, super flat and really nice. So now that I've got this part off of the bottom, it's already looking a lot better even though it still looks bad, but I think it's going to be best to do at least the first coat of white on this bottom portion like when the when it's not already connected so i'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in and we're gonna go ahead and give everything one coat of white so i'm gonna be using beyond paint the color is called bright white i've used beyond paint a lot of times um, i love using it on cabinetry like kitchen cabinets bathroom vanities things like that but then it's also a great furniture paint and then it's also great because i don't have to sand or prime since we cleaned really well it's still even going to adhere to this laminate here okay so beyond paint is a thicker paint because of all of the qualities that it has it has that primer in there and then it's just thick because it really helps the adherence now I'm still going to mix it up, make sure everything is all combined as it should be. And then I'll be using the furniture kit here, which includes a roller tray, a roller, and a chip brush. So Beyond Paint recommends that it be applied with a roller. And then in the spots where the roller can't reach, like corners and things, you can apply it with a chip brush in a stippling motion. And I'll show you that. I have also sprayed Beyond Paint and it worked like a charm as well. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and get one coat on everywhere that's gonna have paint because they're gonna have a little bit of some different designs going on, but the base is gonna be white all around. So this first coat is gonna be really light and you're gonna see a little bit of texture. We want that roller texture on the first coat and beyond because it's going to help it adhere better. That's another reason why it's great to apply it with a roller because the more texture there is, the better it's going to hold up and be durable. But don't get confused because it's not really going to be like rough to the touch. It's just going to have a tiny bit of texture for that adherence. Another reason why I chose to use Beyond Paint on this specific unit is because of the countertops. So I've used Beyond Paint before painting countertops in my parents' bathroom, which gets a lot of traffic and water and just things like that. And it has held up for the past two years really, really well. So that experience made me feel confident that it'll also hold up on our reception desk here. Um, when the customers are like going back and forth over the top of it if we're down here you know with our computers and things like that it'll really hold up nicely so 
another great way to use Beyond Paint is potentially on countertops, whether it be in your kitchen or your bathroom. All right, that's coat one on everything. Again, it's looking not so great right now, but after that first coat gets on there and dries for that two to four hours, it's going to start looking better and better as I add more and more coats. Um, the, the first coat just goes on pretty light because we're just starting to starting that adherence process. So once this is dry, we'll do coat number two. All right, we're ready for coat number two. Everything has dried overnight, so we have had plenty of time for drying. I'm gonna start on the little toe kicks here and move over to the large desk. So next up, I am going to just kind of prep because I'm, I still need to do some more coats of paint, but I'm gonna start prepping for the step after the paint um, while this second coat is drying. So I wanted to add a cool design on the front of the checkout counter. So what I was originally planning to do was put like some fluting or some dowels on it, but it was going to get pretty expensive. And so I sort of, was looking around at a hardware store, trying to figure out what I was going to do instead, but still kind of get that same look or that same design. So I ended up landing on this idea where I am gonna be taking veneer edge banding. So it's about three quarters of an inch wide, and I am going to take it and make it the fluting style down the front of this cash wrap. So I need to go ahead and cut this to size. I've measured and it's 40 and a half inches from up here until the bottom down here. And so I need to start cutting. I got, I think eight or 10 rolls of this, um, but this was actually the more budget friendly version of the route that I was originally going to go. So let's start cutting some veneer edge banding. All right, everything is painted. So that means that we're able to move on to the next step. I will say the white needed a few more coats than I anticipated. So I ended up doing about four coats everywhere that I painted white. And that was what got me to the full coverage. So keep that in mind when you're ordering the Beyond Paint. It's a great paint, but the white is just a little bit more opaque and you're gonna need more coats. So, Next step, now that I've got all of my veneer edge banding also cut into the lengths that I need it, I am ready to start measuring out the area and applying it. And so with the veneer edge banding, basically there's a layer of glue on the back here and it's heat activated. So I'll take my little iron and I will begin to just iron it onto the front of the reception desk for adding just a little bit of detail um, and a little bit of interest and some texture and bringing some of that wood element into the reception desk. All right, so I really want to mask this crack here in the middle. Um, and luckily it's directly in the middle on both sides. So I'll be able to start my design right here, like so. All right, I'm gonna change gears really quickly because I want to actually put this off of the palette so that I have just a better angle. But before we do so, so we don't have to do that again, I am going to go ahead and attach the toe kicks down here. So all I'm gonna do is line it up underneath and on the edge here. 
And then I'm going to use my brad nailer to nail it on and to connect it. First side is done. It's looking a little bit different than I originally had in my mind, but I like the way that it looks and it's giving that, like I said, the visual interest and some texture on the front here. So it's not just a stark white. And then again, this will be covered up back with the metal part that goes up there. And so I think it's really coming together. Once this side or once that side's done, I'll go back around and trim all of the excess um, veneer edge banding down below but we're moving and grooving this is a little time consuming but it's just like a cheaper way to give that textured look and to just kind of add a design you could even do this on the fronts of drawers you could do this on the like anywhere really on some furniture so just another another way to upscale and try new things with your furniture flip so after I got this front portion done and I was about ready to move on to the other side I'm just not for sure if I'm liking where this is headed I kind of am getting some circus vibes from it but at the same time I feel like I do like it, but it just isn't complete yet. And so I was asking Neiman and then I was asking Izzy. And if you didn't know, we recently hired our first employee and her name is Izzy. So you'll see her popping in and out of some videos. She's gonna be helping us run our store here, but then there's gonna be so many other things. She's coined as our dynamic creative assistant. So she's got a lot of hats that she's wearing. Sane. Yes, keeping us sane, helping us plan uh, just things that are going to be coming in the future. And we've had her on for a few days now and we're not looking back because we're really enjoying it. Anyway, she has this skill where she can 3D render something. And so I'm, she's going to take a picture of this. We're going to see what it might look like with some different things and colors added on the top here and the bottom here, just to see if we can keep what's going on around the middle portion, um, but we can tweak something without totally starting over since I don't love it just yet. Sweet. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. I like that. Thanks, Izzy. All right, sweet. I feel a lot better now that we got that figured out and knowing what it will mostly look like once we get it all finished. This is a trust the process project. It honestly has been from the start. So usually I trust the process, but I don't know. It was just giving me some weird vibes, um, but I'm gonna continue this. We're almost done with the veneer and then we can actually move on to the part that's gonna bring everything together. Done adding the veneer. We're gonna do one more piece 
and it's going to be basically where the two pieces come together. I will stick it over that crack, but that's going to happen when we actually place the desk in the spot where it's gonna go. So now let's tackle the countertop. Before we move on to the tops here, we've got a couple of packages that I wanted to open on camera from you lovely people and Neem's gonna join me. This one is coming from Miss Wanda Dillard. Enjoy your gift from Wanda. And we got ourselves Some finally forearm forklifts. Forearm forklifts. <laughs> which, why did it take us three years to put together the idea that these might be smart to use? Who knows? But thank you, Wanda. And that's what they're just the moving straps. So yeah. it's going to allow us to leverage I think these it's, instead of our backs. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's supposed to like take off like 40% of the weight or something, 70%, something like that. You strap them on to the furniture and your forearms, and then you lift it, and it's supposed to be a lot lighter and easier to lift. So I'm kind of intrigued. I don't think that they'll be able to work on these because yeah. these are quite large and like awkward we'll but plenty of other furniture that they will yeah thank you wanda thank you wanda and then universal strong arm oh snap these are these are toilet levers they're brass goldish color i didn't even have these on the wish list what Ah, uh, you guys, you guys are awesome. Let's see who this is from. Hopefully they wrote a note. All right, here we go. You got two notes? I think it's the same yeah, thing. it's the same thing. Okay. Hi, Lauren and Neiman. We've been watching your channel for quite some time. So excited about your store. Your bathrooms are so gorgeous. Hope you like the last detail. Oh, that's from awesome. <laughs> Diana and Jonas. Oh, thanks, Diana and Jonas. You guys, I think those are the ones that reached out to us on Instagram saying they had something for us. I see, I <laughs> see. I see you guys. You guys are always looking out. So we appreciate the gift. Um, and yeah, if you want to send us anything, even if it's not on our list, just reach out yeah. and we'll send you the address here. We'll um, take the hint. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, have my dad on that right away. <laughs> So he'll install those for me, I'm sure. Those are really going to help bring together that. Like 100%. It's a, like, I mean, everything else is brass except that. So I think little this, details. Will, this will be perfect. Carry so. on top. Thanks to Wanda for these and Diana and Jonas for these. I need to get back to work. So for the tops, I am so excited because I am going to try out a marbling effect for the first time. I'm just kind of gonna get in the zone, be creative. I'm just gonna wing it. I have no idea what I'm actually doing, but we're gonna see how it turns out. So I've got the Beyond Paint Color Soft Gray, and this is gonna help me create that marbling effect. I've got a wet towel here to help me blot. I've got dry towels, and then I've got a chip brush to just start, and I'm just, just gonna start. I'm just gonna, just gonna wing it. I'm a little nervous, but I got this. I need to parking lot the marble effect. It wasn't coming out how I thought. Still kind of want to try it, but I also might just go ahead and paint them all gray. We'll see. But even and I were sitting here looking at this and I just kind of was like, you know, I have all of these veneer pieces left over and I originally planned on doing them about like two-ish inches apart. But then as I went and went, I just added, there was so much space in here. We think that it'll look better to have more added and I counted and I have enough of the edge banding left to go ahead and put them um, in the middle of each section just to really help mitigate more of that white dead space and I think it'll help the look of it as well.
We're gonna change directions again. Um, I don't know. I just can't get it how I want it to look. I have this vision in my mind and I'm not really being able to execute it on this. This is my first time trying it, so definitely gonna practice more. But as for this project, I'm ready to get this piece done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the bottom countertop with a darker gray, the pewter from Beyond Paint. And then I'm gonna leave the top portion white and then we'll go from there. Okay, now that the countertops are all painted, it's time to go ahead and do the top coat. Now you might be wondering, Beyond Paint doesn't need top coat, and you're right, but whenever you do a countertop, Beyond Paint suggests to use a top coat because it's gonna be a lot more of a higher traffic area, you know, things scooting around on it, and it's also gonna help create it to be a waterproof surface. So they do have a multi-purpose sealer. It's pretty thin. Um, and it comes in the 16 ounce jar. You apply this the same way that you apply the paint with the roller and just roll it on the surface everywhere you want that top coat to be. What the? <laughs> yeah, it's super thin. Okay, it's time to put some of the finishing touches on. So I did paint this gray as well that's gonna match the bottom and the countertop. So Neiman's gonna help me by holding it and then we're going to screw it in. You don't have to have a good reaction, but I think it changed <laughs> it like, like it oh, literally just so came too. together. Like that was so unfinished. I think, I think that's so what too. was throwing us all off, right? Yeah. Dang. I think the bottom and the top being the same. Yes. Yeah. Good call. Surprise! I changed my mind again. I am going to paint the top counter the same color as the lower counter. I just, uh, I mean, it just makes sense. I can't make up my mind on how I want this piece to look. So the pewter is going on the top counter as well. Here we go. The reception desk is done and it is in its place and it looks so good in here. Like Neiman went out and like walked in and looked at it and he likes it now. And I think it really just came together really nicely. I can't wait to, you know, spruce it up even more with some decor, adding our shelving back behind here and just really making it look like it belongs and like it's not the only thing in this room as it is currently. But we didn't do this ourselves. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it is literally the largest piece that we've ever had, largest like 
heaviest thing we've ever had and we actually had the movers that are helping us move our furniture from our storage units here move this over here for us they just put it on a little roller rolled it right over and so it is now in its place so i've still got a couple of finishing touches if you will um, to this thing but i'm not going to finish it completely 100 percent until we get it in the exact spot that we're going to put it so one of those is that i want to put a edge banding right here in the middle crack to, to finish that off and that can't happen until like we're done moving them and we can screw them together and then also just a few other things down around the bottom just kind of perfecting everything making sure everything is ready to go but just another piece of the puzzle that has been completed and it's really good because i keep saying this but i don't know if we're gonna be able to finish by november 4th but we'll get done what we can get done um I'm thinking of potentially putting some more cabinetry behind this so that we've got some storage space for like the reception area. And then also over here, I'm gonna be putting the shelving units that I've been thrifting for. Um, all of my colorful glass is gonna go back there. So, so much more to come in these next two weeks before our official grand opening. And so we're just gonna be working 24 seven for the next, several days but we're so excited to be bringing you guys along on this thanks again to beyond paint for sponsoring today's video that was a perfect combo of colors and i'm really pleased with the finish and the results of the paint if you're interested in beyond paint check out our links down below in the description and use my code so that you can get some money off everybody loves uh, some coupons and some discounts so thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you on the flip side. And really quick, let's go see where the movers are. How much they've got done since we got here. Looks like they're unloading truck one.